Okay, this is part two of the introduction to energy grade lines and hydraulic grade lines. So I've got a system here with a tank filled with liquid. We could say it's water. It's connected to a pipeline. And the idea behind energy grade line, hydraulic grade line analysis, is to be able to describe how the energy is changing along the length of a pipeline. And energy is basically divided into two parts. You've got your sort of um, static energy, P over gamma plus C, and then you've got your kinetic energy, which is V squared over 2G. And so the energy grade line captures all the energy, and the hydraulic grade line just captures that aspect of energy um, associated with both the pressure and the height in the system. So what I want you to note, first of all, is that when we start this uh, analysis at the reservoir, that the hydraulic grade line and the energy grade line are at the same height. Why is that? Well, if we pick out a point here, A, and we write P over A divided by gamma plus VA squared over 2G plus the elevation at A, and if we work in sort of gauge pressures, and when we do hydraulic grade line analysis, we typically work in gauge pressures. What we see is that it, the, at this point here, the gauge pressure is zero. That term is negligible. And also the velocity is zero. So that term goes away. And what we can see is that all of the energy, both the potential energy and the total energy, is captured by the height of the reservoir. And from the last analysis, what we saw is that we could have another point down here, or point B, and that point would have a higher pressure and a smaller elevation, but the sum of P over gamma plus Z would be the same here as it was there. So the elevation of the water surface, we'll call that ZA, that completely captures the energy of the system um, in the reservoir, and that is the energy of the system that's beginning the flow into the pipeline. So I'm going to erase this, and now I'm going to show you how we actually sketch out the energy grade line and the hydraulic grade line. Well, we start off with an energy equal to the height of the water in the tank. And the first example I'll show you is a case of completely frictionless flow, so there's no energy losses anywhere. And if there's no energy losses, that means that as the flow moves from here to the outlet, the energy doesn't change. So if I wanted to plot the energy grade line, I would just continue this line in this direction, and I would label that the energy grade line. Okay, so it shows that you begin with an energy equal to the water surface height, flow moves into the pipeline, you maintain that energy, and then it flows out with that energy. Now, when we exit the system, we're down here at this point, which I'll call that C. Well, you can think of like point C has a P over gamma plus a VC squared over 2G plus an elevation at C. And the elevation at C is represented by this height. And we're in a free jet at this location, so that means the pressure is zero. So what you'll notice, the pressure is zero. Hydraulic grade line is pressure plus height. So since the pressure is zero, the hydraulic grade line at this location is simply given by the height z. So that means the hydraulic grade line is actually a line that goes right through the center of the pipe. So we'll call that hydraulic grade line. So in this simple case involving a tank with a stored water flowing into a pipeline, leaving the pipeline, the energy grade line is just a horizontal surface equal to the reservoir height. Hydraulic grade line is just a horizontal line equal to the height of the pipe. So this is an example for a completely frictionless flow. The situation changes when we have energy losses. So that's coming up in part three.